Oh, almost, <laughs> almost got you that time. It's funny, during the breaks, people have been asking questions about various episodes, and somebody said, do you have a favorite one? And you just said the word grapes, and people broke into applause. Uh, it was, a, it was an have... episode we made years ago where I had gone to Italy, and I was trying to get into showbiz, and uh, I was chosen by some Italian director with a whole bunch of women. And uh, I thought I was getting into show business, but I wasn't. I was a grape stomper. Right. And uh, I was sent out to a field, and they said, stomp the grapes. So I just couldn't understand the language or anything. But I did as I was told. And I, I pulled my skirt up and jumped into the vat with this lady. Now, making it at the studio, uh, we had to get little, short, real Italian, ladies that spoke Italian, uh -huh. and they're, it's very difficult to find the real peasant, short, stocky type of little Italian lady. You know, most of them are very chic and very uh, svelte, and, and uh, we really had to go way down in one of the grape uh, vineyard areas yeah. to, to find anyone that was, that was real Italian, and we came up with three that didn't understand English, <laughs> and, but they were perfect. Yeah. So the man that came that day with them said, now this is what you're going to do. And they said, fine, fine, okay, they understood. Now from there on, they're on their own. And our director didn't speak Italian, I didn't speak Italian, no one spoke Italian. But anyway, they knew they had to go, go barefoot, you know, pull their skirts up and get in. And they knew how to stomp grapes, they had done it. And I got in the vat with one and she had been told that we would have a fight. And she had also, that we tried to explain to her that there were times when my legs had to come up for the, you know, in this huge vat, and it was real grapes, and it's like being in a, in a vat of eyeballs. Oh, I know what that's like. Oh, it's awful. <laughs> and anyway, I had to, I had to prance <laughs> around with, ooh, I forgot where I was. You know, I had to prance around in, the, in yeah. the vat like this with her, and she was doing all that, so I made a dance out of it like this. Yeah. And finally, I slipped. And uh, in slipping, I hit her, accidentally. And she took offense, and so she hauled off and let me have it. <laughs> now this was, this was supposed to happen, and yeah. that she got right. But when she hit me, oh my God, she only came to about here anyway. She hit me right here, took all the wind out of me. Now, she had been told that we were to stay down for a while, give me a chance to get my legs way up, Mm -hmm. so that they'd show in the camera. Then up would come an arm, and then was supposed to have, my head was supposed to pop, well, my head never popped up. <laughs> she kept me down by the throat. <laughs> and I had grapes up my nose, in my ears, and she was choking me, and I'm really beating her to get her off. And they're wondering what, because we do all this in front of an audience, yeah. you know. And she couldn't remember, and no one, or she didn't understand that if she had to let me up once in a while. I was drowning in these grapes. Finally, I had all I could take, and I just gave what, you know, the last gasp, and I got her by the throat, and I went, ah! Like that. Up she went, and she weighed him. She was a half a ton. <laughs> but she was killing me, and I came up over the side of the bat, and I hollered the director's name. You know, ah, like for help. And he thought that was great, dog. Audience loved it. And down I went again. <laughs> this woman, well, she, she spent so much time beating the hell out of me in that fat, we had to cut half of it. Oh. And we had to stop, and somebody had to come in and say, look, let her up eventually. We had to get on with the scene. She said, oh, yeah. And down we went again. <laughs> Ow. Oh. Oh. But to drown in oh. a vat of grapes is not the way I had planned to go, you know. What a way to go. Graped to death uh, would just be awful. Uh, there's, a, there's another uh, episode that's a favorite of mine, and we have a little clip from it. This is kind of complicated because um, the, it, it's the one... Well, you made a movie once with the Marx Brothers, which has nothing to do with this, but one of the Marx Brothers um, appeared on your show. Harpo. Yeah. Everybody loved Harpo, whoever met him. Oh, yeah. And uh, now, what I have to ex explain should take a second, but we can only show a minute of this. It's a wonderful scene. It's almost killing to only see a minute of it be because of the legal complexities of the yeah. distribution rights. Yeah, is if it we the, show where more we than a minute, together? they would all sue us, the yeah, station. It, is through. it where we're together? Where you're together and you do. Yeah, I just want to, may I, may I, do yeah. I have a second? The thing about working with Harpo, so, such a darling man, but whenever he worked, he worked alone. Yeah. He never had to 
work with anyone else, even though he was always with his brothers. Mm -hmm. He did his stuff alone, right? Yeah. So now he was to come in and I was to imitate what he did. But he couldn't remember from one rehearsal to the other what he did. So we went crazy teaching him his routine. We had to take it down, you know, that he did this, he did that, and then he had to learn his routine he'd yeah. been doing for years. <laughs> so this is, well, I guess, the one with the million. It'll the... remind you of something in, I believe it's Duck Soup. And it's, Duck uh, Soup? Isn't, it, isn't, uh, isn't the, isn't the, the Marx Brothers mirror scene in Duck Soup? I think it is. Oh, there I don't know, I don't, I don't, I thought you meant, this is yeah. one of my shows. But this is from it? your show. Yeah. And I believe he comes to your house, finds you dressed as Harpo, yeah. is that it? Yeah. Is astounded and thinks it might be himself in the mirror. Now with that in mind, uh, just take a look at a frustrating minute of this ingenious scene. Here it is. It's all we can show. In the whole thing, how is it revealed that it's, that the, that it's two different people? So, uh, his hat's on a string, I believe, or something, and it comes, comes back up yeah. and yours doesn't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's funny, I'm sorry we could only show that minute, but that maybe you could have explained better than I could the legal reasons why we can't, but it has to do with the stations who've bought the show's rights to it and so on and so on. Groucho said once that Harpo uh, inherited all of his mother's good qualities and that uh, Harpo was the most lovable uh, man. He was so yeah. bright and so darling, yeah. so, oh, he was a, a great musician, great artist. Yeah. Oh. It was fun for you to see that again, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. Haven't seen it in a long time. That was kind of nostalgic seeing that clip. It makes me wonder, of all the people you've known in the in the biz, uh, there must be a lot of them that you miss. I don't want to turn morbid on you, but uh, who do you, whose company do you miss from years past? Hedda Hopper. You're kidding. Betty Grable. You, you mean Hedda Hopper? Because she was a big gossip columnist. You isn't it? mean people that are gone? That's what I mean. Lionel yeah. Barrymore. Yeah. Bobby Darren, a lot of them. Gable, did you know Gable? Yes, sir. Yeah. Was he in Carol Lombard. Carol Lombard. Marvelous friend of mine when I first started. Yes, yeah, she was. She, oh, she was a great lady. Yeah. Was she witty? Very. Beautiful. She has about the wittiest voice. Chic, mm -hmm. sexy, adorable. Men just. Fell down, yeah. yeah. And ladies, too. Did you know Bogey? Yes, I knew Bogey. Yeah. I don't miss him. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I didn't know him that yeah. well. <clears throat> no, no, I, I knew him. Yeah. But I didn't see as much of him as I did other people. How did you know Gable? Would he come over for dinner? Uh... Many times, yes. We lived uh, in the valley. Um, close to each other, mostly because of Carol. Uh -huh. And uh, we used to go to movies together, and after Carol died, he used to come over on his motorcycle and we'd go whizzing around a little bit. And we used to go hunting together, skeet shooting. Was, uh, I think you mentioned to me once that you um, were very depressed by the death of John Ford. And uh, well, I didn't know if you had worked I wanted with John to, Ford. No, I wanted to work with him, and... Uh, uh -huh. We were we almost made it, but didn't. Yeah. Same with DeMille. Never worked with DeMille. No, I had a great part, and then I got pregnant, and uh, I wouldn't have given that up for anything. I was supposed to be the elephant girl in um, <laughs> the greatest show on earth. I think Gloria Graham got the part, but I oh, was yeah. so elated to be pregnant. That was when I had Lucy. Oh, yes. Yeah. I was delighted to be pregnant. Nothing else mattered, but, but I, did want, I did want to work with him. It was the studio sore that you were pregnant? They usually are. Don't want you to lead a private life. Well, I didn't tell anyone because I was working for Harry Cohen then, and you didn't tell him a lot. Yeah. And Mr. DeMille was paramount, so I was keeping it quiet and trying to sneak out. That, there's a story about that, isn't there? Yes, there is. Too long to go into now. Oh, okay. 